Greetings, brothers and sisters. So I made a video, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago entitled, Aren't You Tired of Hollywood and the Media Pitching These Crazy Conspiracy Theories? And I documented how they look at people who are so-called conspiracy theorists as crazy, but the media and Hollywood, you know, all this um, TV shows and movies and books and things is filled with conspiracy theories. And our internal world, what makes up our internal world, the way that we view the world, our, the lens in which we see the world, is based in movies and TV shows and our stories. I've talked about that in so many videos in the past. What's inside of us are stories. Stories are important to people. Stories you tell children, stories people hear. And our stories are TV shows and movies, many of which at the very basis of the plot and storyline is a conspiracy, you know? And so when you see things in real life, something that plays out with the powers that be, you're going to oftentimes think there's a conspiracy just based in how you and your internal world has been trained by your stories, by your movies and TV shows. And I mentioned this TV show, The Event, and my wife and I went back and watched it. And I remember when I watched it in 2010. And it's funny because I didn't have a TV for so many years. And I wasn't watching TV. And so there was a period of time. I don't know what 2010. This is when this show was released. It was on NBC. But for whatever reason, I watched it with the idea that it was going to be loaded with truth or narratives and like Illuminati and you know, all these types of symbols. You know, this is how, what I was thinking about back in 2010, and it didn't disappoint. And so I always remembered some of the various plot lines. But when my wife and I rewatched it, we were aghast at how much 2020 stuff, stuff with Trump, stuff with COVID, you know, was in this TV show. You can call it predictive programming or whatever you want to say, foreshadowing or forewarning, but it's all right there. So I pulled some clips. This is a spoiler alert. I'm going to cover the entire series here. You know, it's old. I mean, <laughs> but anyways, let's start off here with the first part of the show. So it starts out with the president of the United States about to announce that there was aliens that landed 66 years ago in our in a secret military base in Alaska. And somebody doesn't want that announcement to happen. So a plane is hijacked and is being flown into the president. So the plane is being flown into two twin trees. You know, I'm going to talk about the Freemasonic pillars of Boaz and Joaquin. So that's going to come back around. But it starts off with that. <sighs> so the plane disappears into some sort of porthole and it ends up in Arizona or something like that. They were in Florida. We'll never know what happened here. Mr. President, with all due respect, Nothing we tell or don't tell them will change the fact that their loved ones are dead. Our responsibility is to protect the American public as a whole. Protect them from the truth. We don't have a choice. Yeah, you do. So I'm going to talk about this throughout this video. This is one of my major points in my other video. How often do you see a Hollywood movie or TV show where the government lies to the people about a catastrophe? I mean, it's always the go-to plot, right? You never hear a situation where the government comes clean and tells everybody what's going on. <laughs> like, that never happens. There's always some lie or some BS that goes on to deceive the people. And so there's reason for that because people react and panic, and so that happens. But this happens in real life, right? This is just something governments do, especially our government, there's always secrecy, there's always disinformation, and that plays out in these storylines. Supposed to bring us home. 
That's what I'm doing. Yeah? How? You saw how behind they are? I'm trying to boost your scientific knowledge so we can be helped too. So that's a badge from the Los Alamos National Laboratory. I worked in that town, not, not in the lab. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. I worked in the town. It's a weird town. I'll talk about that someday in a video. Thanks to what I've already done, the U.S. government should have the capabilities to create nuclear fission in a matter of months instead of decades. So there's a lot of narratives and evidence out there that a lot of our modern day technology, chip technology, cell phones and computers and all these things come from extraterrestrials, come from some sort of alien species, either reverse engineered from a crashed UFO or they were given to us by alien, whatever, contact or something. In this show, they are giving nuclear power, atomic power, so they can use it to return home. They're calling it the Manhattan Project. Do you know what they're going to use this for? This country is at war, Thomas. I don't care what they're going to use it for. Which speaks to this idea that human beings aren't mature enough to have nuclear weapons, which, you know, we're not. Right? That's really the first thing you want to say to me after 66 years? So the aliens arrived 66 years ago. This is uh, this woman, Sophia, she's the leader, and her son, Thomas, who left with a lot of healthy ones, ones that weren't injured in the crash. So they weren't discovered, and they infiltrated the population. The reason I pulled this clip is they use six over and over again, and I didn't pull all of the clips. Hotel rooms named six, and so six is a common theme, like of course it would be. They've got a tracker in Sophia. In her? They put it in her food. It's a radioactive isotope. While it's active, they'll be able to track her wherever she goes. So this is self-explanatory. They're tracking. They put radioactive isotopes so they could monitor her NSA style. And, you know, I mean, that would never happen in real life, like COVID tracking or something. You understand this? These things always exist in these movies and TV shows, and then they become reality. I love you, Mason. So she just called him Mason. His name, this is um, a flashback. You know, this was, um, I think, made by the same people that made the um, show I just covered called Salvation. They have a lot of the same people in it. And this character who is, you know, these aliens live longer. And so this character named Simon, who also was an actor who played in this show, uh, Salvation, and again, cross plot, plot lines and things, and he's a sleeper agent in the government, and he has uh, access to the president, and his real name is Mason, and in the past when he was, you know, when they were back in the 50s, he dated this woman, fell in love with this human woman, who eventually is going to age, and she knew him as Mason, of course, Freemasons, and you can see there's an Illuminati eye, She's get, there's a one eye shot, which happens throughout this show. This is the only time I'm going to point it out because it's just, uh, there's too much to cover here. And I'm going to talk about the Vedic age. People used to live much longer lives on planet Earth. Human beings, of course, aliens. So that's something, there's a lot of things that I know that's covered in this show and other shows like it that has basis in reality. And we'll come back to that at the end of this video. Ahead of you is 6th Street. You're gonna make a left. Okay, she's on to 6th, crossing east. And so there was the 666. The guy said go to 6th Street. And then here they show you the 6th Street. And then the guy says 6th. So this is very common. I mean, 6 is used so much in this TV show. I'm not gonna cover any more of it here, but it's there. <laughs> There's lots of it. I mean, man, I'm a snowbird. I'm a Mason. So this is 10 years ago from the time they're shooting the show. And it is some years since he was with this woman back in the 50s. She's now an old woman. And she's calling him Mason, identifying him as a Mason. Oh. Simon, you okay? Mason, how can it be? You haven't aged a day. Mason, it's me. It's me. 
So he's about to cover up her hand with his hand. I'm sorry. And so she got an apology from a mason, and then he grabs her hand with some sort of masonic hand grip. Mason. So this is one of the things I remember from watching the show. I only had a few memories from it, but her saying mason to him and him nodding his head that he was acknowledging he was a Mason. And so much of the symbology and the narratives are based in Freemasonry in this TV show. I don't lie. I don't lie. Because she's a truther. <laughs> so now they introduce this woman who's a truther character for an episode. I'm a journalist. I used to be, till I saw the light. She saw the light. Truthers see the light. She was a journalist until she saw the light. Now she's a truther. Nobody wants the truth. People don't want the truth. God forbid it would all go down in flames. It's the lies that keep the construct going, don't you see? Yeah, I see. <laughs> I don't know about these two dopes, but I see. <laughs> Preach, sister. Spread by the vested interests in the government and the private sector and the churches and the stock exchanges, all fabricating and spinning and telling stories that keep 300 million consumers happy and stupid and spending. Yeah, they do. Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Just stop. I'm not the deluded one. You are. See, why put these kind of things in TV shows and movies and then demonize people like this? Of course... They're making her look a little bit crazy, but she ends up being right on about these things. Like everything that she says ends up being true, but they make her look like she's crazy. I showed you this in that TV show called um, Colony, the same sort of thing, where they had a truther character who ended up being kind of weak and punky and, you know, abusive and these things, even though he was right, you know. They often portray truthers like this, and yet these narratives, I mean, there wouldn't be very many TV shows and movies if they didn't have some sort of conspiracy in them. We're taking it to the same building two hours earlier. This is the best resolution we've been able to get. So notice it says 11th Street here, right? They are, you know, something's going to happen on 11th Street. Spoiler alert, a building comes down. So a column just fell behind Mason, the character Mason, Simon. And, you know, Freemasons in their Freemasonic Hall, they always have these two pillars called Boaz and Joaquin. So this building's coming down and one of the pillars is falling. The building is collapsing around Mason. And so they're watching the building. This is from the White House. And the president is watching this building on 11th Street collapse into its own footprint. So you see the event. This is their intro. Very um, telling <laughs> graphics there. And the way that they spell out event is very, um, you know, it connects to Real big events that's happened. Do you expect us to believe that this happened to my family because of aliens? Yes, that's exactly what we expect you to believe, bitch. And the correct term is extraterrestrial biological entities, or EBs. Nerd alert. First. Madeline, if no one's actually seen these EBs, how can you be sure they really exist? Top secret government documents, some of which are in the file. Yes, the elusive top secret government documents things seriously your father and i were on a plane that went from florida to arizona in seconds we don't have that technology speak for yourself bro i've been rocking that technology since 1977 <laughs> michael was piloting that you know about it rumor has it the plane disappeared during an assassination attempt now it makes sense not to be it doesn't can you please explain it to me conspiracy lady i'm stone the president would be stopped revealing the existence of the ebs and your father would be stopped passing on what he found out exactly you can't have that people revealing the truth in such things 
That just can't happen. So they were stopping the president from revealing that there were aliens. And so as they go through the introduction, D.B. Sweeney's in this. He's guest starring in some of the episodes. And Scott Mitchell Campbell and Paula Mickelsome. And then here's the bit Madison Mason. Another Mason. Another reference to Freemasonry. You know, Freemasonry. Cataloged by what we carry. All your personal information, scannable from a distance by whoever has the wherewithal. This is the truther lady's even more truther, cynical truther friend. Who took your sister, but I've seen what they can do. All right, this game, <laughs> it, it's rigged. You cannot win. Exactly. This conspiracy guy knows what he's talking about. This game is rigged. Everything's rigged. It's rigged. The system is rigged, and you're not going to win because it's rigged. Girls. So there's child trafficking. They don't really tell you what it's about, but they're injecting these girls, and they age, and the girls turn out to be all half alien, half human. I love you. In a way I never thought possible. And I thought of my life without you. So this dude is the um, advisor, security advisor, national security advisor to the president. And they do a flashback to when he was married to someone who turned out to be a Russian spy. <laughs> and he became pretty bitter and suspicious after that. But this is another way of bringing the Russians into this narrative. Of course, the Russians playing a prevalent role now in modern days. And then with all these other things that are coming up, it makes sense. And of course, you know, this spy and espionage and covert stuff that's always included in these TV shows. The other opportunities. Right now, it's all about mobilizing our base. It's all about the big picture. I couldn't agree more. Unfortunately, your party is going to lose the White House to Senator Martinez. Well, we don't know that. But I do. It's a done deal. So they're just saying here that elections are rigged, the presidency is rigged. Of course, that's played out <laughs> very recently as well. This is, this is my dogs are scratching their neck things or whatever, their tags um, in the background. And so this is Hal Holbrook, who plays a villain billionaire in the beginning, who turns out to be kind of a hero. So he's a shapeshifter as well. They threw that in there. They don't really go into depth about it, but they explain what he is later on in the movie. It's a pleasure to see you all again after so many years. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Aliens unite! Woo! So Sophia was in prison for 66 years. I don't cover that here. But that's um, in many of the early episodes. And then she's broken out. And she sees all of these people who left when before they got captured. So they've been infiltrating American society, all these aliens in this ballroom. I saw something in the trash can once. There was a triangle on the medicine. So there's a pyramid on the med medicine. It's explained later on. They don't go into it too much. But there's a lot of medicine stuff coming up. There's you know, things that are relevant in the current time right now. Even though this stuff was loaded and this show was loaded with stuff that had already happened earlier, you know, pre-2010, but also loaded with things that were going to happen post-2010, and these girls are aging really quickly. They're being trialed, child trafficked, you know, they're being kidnapped and given these injections, and there's a triangle on the bottles 
of the stuff that's depriving them of their childhood. I can't. <laughs> then don't. But so this is an alien who's displeased her leader. You can see the Washington Monument is coming out of her head. The Washington Monument plays a prevalent role in this show. It also played a very prevalent role in the um, in the Salvation Show, which is, again, tied to this show, oddly. They have a very similar ending. And it's in another show I'm going to talk about in a couple of days or next week or something that's also along these lines. And again, these are all shows that display these theories. So here's this alien begging her leader for mercy. She ends up shooting herself in the leg as punishment. And, you know, it's like a sacrifice and the Washington Monument, which is, of course, Freemasonic obelisk, is very prevalent here. What do you think will happen when the public finds out that you knew about the Innistrunka detainees and went along with the cover-up? That you were part of one of the greatest conspiracies of our history? So the president finds out the vice president was involved with Hal Holbrook. He doesn't know about Hal Holbrook yet. But he um, finds out that the vice president was behind his attempt, attempted sass, assassination of flying a plane into him. And, you know, more lies, and they're using the word conspiracy here, right? And there's like a couple hundred conspiracies in this show, like, <laughs> at least. I mean, it's, I couldn't count them all if I tried. Turning to international news, accounts of a strange sighting off the southern tip of Amala today. Amateur video capturing what eyewitnesses claim was a rocket or missile. The aliens, or EBs, launched a satellite so they could communicate with their home planet. And this is a well-done piece of the local news, you know, feeding governmental lies. Streaking through the sky. Now an update. Initial reports of an unscheduled rocket launch in Amala. The State Department has confirmed that Amala does not have any rocket launch capabilities. Senior U.S. military officials claim the sightings were, in fact, a passenger jet. And so... We believe this is the truth community, that the government tells the media lies now more than ever, and the media covers them, or the media tells the government lies and the government covers them. I mean, it's a two-way street. But here you have a, an event that's being covered up, the government lying to the media and the, li and the media lying to the public, and we all know this happens. But when you say something about it, they're like, oh, you're crazy, right? <laughs> But here it is in yet another TV show. How many times have you seen the government lie to the media and the media lie to the people in some sort of TV show or movie? Up to a short time ago, we thought we had all the non-terrestrials in prison. They're called EBs, Mr. President. Or should I call you Blair Underwood? An unknown number of them, sleeper agents, have been living among us. Yeah, look around, m and -Fers. There might be some, in fact, there are some in this room. Yesterday, they launched a communication satellite from a private facility in Southeast Asia. Now, most of you have already seen the cover story we fed the news outlets. They are feeding the news media a cover story. Like, it's just right here in the open, right? It's admitted to. Like, is this so far off that every TV show puts out this narrative that the government lies to the media and the li media lies to you, right? <laughs> Why do they keep on putting this narrative out there and then get on you, call you a crazy conspiracy theorist when you verbalize the same thing in reality? It's inside you, like it's the lens in which you view the world. You're being told by this TV show to not trust the media or the government. Because they've been hiding their true agenda. They were an advance party. The first landing at Plymouth Rock, and the same scenario will play out. Meaning? Whoever has the superior firepower wins. Boom! How's that feel, America? At best, they'll colonize us and make us a subject people. At worst, they'll exterminate us. Well, America, I thought you were into that sort of thing. He and Dempsey were in bed together on the assassination attempt of President Martinez. Vice President Jarvis is part of the conspiracy. Yes, yet another conspiracy. Fair to deploy them. They should provide adequate support. Well, you know that I cannot do that, sir. 
The Posse Comitatus Act prohibits the use of United States military forces on U.S. soil except for the case of a natural disaster. Sir. Thank you, General. I'm well aware of federal law. But we're not, so why don't you guys explain it to us because we're dummies. And so <laughs> this is the Posse Comitatus. You know, they're touching everything here, right? They're, they're going through the full gamut. I'm also aware that when Congress passed Posse Comitatus nearly 130 years ago, they weren't accounting for the threat we're facing right now, so don't question me, just do it. That's right, m and that Constitution's old news. Let's throw it out and have martial law and get rid of the Posse Comitatus and put military troops on the street because we have aliens. There are aliens out there. There's aliens on the plane, m and -er. And um, this is another... Freemasonic, these are the Freemasonic pillars again. They're in this church. The aliens are held up in a church for no strategical reason. Surrender. So you can lock us up forever? You know I can't do that. So these pillars are very prevalent in this TV show, and so many of them, and in real life, right? Boaz and Joaquin, these are Freemasonic pillars. They're a big part of this narrative, and they're everywhere. I'm just showing you a few examples in the TV show, but it's something, you know, it's intentional. So the Washington Monument, which I want to cover more extensively in another video I'm going to make, but it's this large presence right across from the White House. And so there's an obelisk in New York City, there's an obelisk in London, England, there's an obelisk in the Vatican, very similar to the, um, to the Washington Monument. These are all Freemasonic symbols. Everyone thinks about the pyramid. There's also a Sphinx in London near the obelisk. And these are very prevalent symbols, right? And they're tied to Freemasonry. Of course, the pyramid and obelisk in while in Las Vegas. So this is a long video. I'm not going to go into a whole thing about obelisks, but they're equally prevalent as, and important as um, pyramids. And the Washington Monument is just right there. Like, <laughs> it's just when you're in the Washington, D.C. area near the White House, it's what sticks up and sticks out most of all. It has to do with, of course, George Washington, who was a Freemason. And here it is coming down. The aliens take it down because they're held up in some church, a strategically bad position to be in. And so they have to do something to get out of there. And they take down the Washington Monument. And I'm going to explain this at the end of the video. I'm just presenting all these bits of evidence from the TV show. Then I'll make sense of it at the end of the video. Getting reports that the Washington Monument is gone. Which is very symbolic to the nature of Washington. Of course, the Washington Monument just played a very significant role in recent events. It was very prevalent in recent events to do with the election and the stuff that happened on Capitol Hill. Aren't they beautiful? What are they? They're guardian angels. I'm going to get into cave art about this stuff too later on in this video. But they brought all this stuff in here. It is, you know, not the best TV show. And it's a little cheesy, a little soap opery. I mean, it's very similar. I think it's a little bit better than Salvation. But it's made with the same sort of, you know, I mean, it's a little bit for stupid people. It's network television. But they've packed a lot of things in here. And like the best stuff I haven't even showed you or the most prevalent stuff is yet to come. Every civilization, every religion has its own concept of the guardian angel, what it represents and symbols when in fact they are very, very real.
So this guy was the guy ejecting the children, and he was the guy that set up the original plane attack on the president. So he appeared to be a villain, but now they're changing, they're flipping the script and making him a guardian angel, a sentinel. Just received word that government sources now believe the Pakistani terrorist organization, Tariq E. Saleem, is responsible for the devastating attack on the Washington Monument. At this and so we already know... <laughs> that it was aliens, but the news, this is the mainstream news, that's guys from MSNBC, is telling everybody that it was some Pakistani terrorists when we know it's actually aliens. So again, the government lying to the media and the media lying to the people. Have you seen this? They've already ID'd the sleepers on those buses. Sophia's people have made inroads at the highest levels. They're working in defense, communications, government. One of them was appointed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals by my predecessor, for God's sake. So the aliens have, in, have infiltrated every level of society and power in the American system. So think about that, right? You know, why would they make TV shows and movies like this? Because it's very hard for us to differentiate between, you know, parts of our brain can't distinguish lies and things like that. And so when you watch something like this, it becomes a part of your reality. And so when you make constant stream of TV shows and movies, and I'm going to come back to this at the end of the video, where the government lies to you, which it does do, right? And, you know, all these various conspiracies and things about aliens and stuff like that. And you say, no, no, that's just TV. That's just, that's just fiction. Well, that's not the way your brain is going to process it. And, you know... <laughs> Is it fiction? So, you know, where did this stuff come from? The attack wasn't the work of Pakistani terrorists. That's just our cover story. Yes, yeah, another cover story, another lie. Right? <laughs> Government lying to the people. That's at least three times in three different circumstances. They've talked about lying to the people. And, of course, lying to the people for years about these aliens. I want to initiate a program to test every American's DNA. Yeah. Let's test everybody's DNA because we've been invaded by aliens. And you want to do this without anyone knowing? You gave up your career as a doctor when your husband ran for office. And before that, you spent time at the CDC. Oh, you're going to bring the CDC into this thing? In your opinion, how can we covertly pursue such a policy? We have the CDC announce an outbreak of a drug-resistant strain of tuberculosis. Convince people that the only way to stop a pandemic is to impose mandatory testing. Wow, that would never happen in real life. So what you're going to do is you're going to lie to the people about a pandemic and then you're going to make get all their DNA because you're going to test the crap out of everybody <laughs> all based in lies. See, that would never happen in real life. Then, with each test you administer, you can secretly gather a DNA sample. Kablawi! Yeah, you can. And then we'll just blame it on the aliens. I can no longer consider this population benevolent. The oath no longer applies. The oath no longer applies? But you took an oath. And I took an oath when I was 16. You think they're going to care about what he's done in America? They will when I give them the details. And they'll just take your word for it. Sean, you're no one. Yeah, Sean, you're nobody. Take it easy, Sean. You're an absolute nobody, no one. Tell the origin story of a tribe of, I think the word is best translated as guardians. A tribe of sentinels. Yes. Yes, it's a sentinel. The be <laughs> it's best described as guardian. You mean sentinel? No, I mean sentinel. You're right, sentinel. What we now know is that a terrorist group behind the destruction of the Washington Monument has a long history of aggressive acts on Western targets. I'm going to use every resource at my disposal to bring these perpetrators to justice. So he's lying a couple of ways, right? This is aliens that attacked the, that took down the Washington Monument, and this this is their first time. <laughs> All the buildings, yeah, they took down that building as well. But we're facing the destruction of our race, and it's my duty to take whatever action is necessary to make sure that doesn't happen. The action is to wipe out humanity we're going to have another another you know doozy coming up here
and how they're going to wipe out humanity. The truth is, Miss Roberts, I am part of a long line of people, sentinels, who have been given the task of securing us against them. So in the context of this movie, you say, well, he means aliens, but is it God? Like, it also could be God. He's playing upwards, right? And so it's, you know, got loads of possibilities here. I have a contact at the CDC that we can trust. He's been adding dummy reports of drug-resistant TB cases to their database. This will mimic the early signs of a potential epidemic. And that should support our cover-up, at least for now. The CDC would, ne a quality organization like the CDC would never be involved in this sort of tomfoolery <laughs> of faking a pandemic for testing and covert actions and a cover-up. No way. No way. There isn't room on this planet to accommodate our entire population of 2.5 billion. And their safety is my only priority. But what about the people who are already here? So we will have to affect changes here. The native population will be winnowed substantially. We're working on a weapon to make that happen quickly and efficiently. What kind of weapon would reduce the human population so the alien population could come in and rule and take over the planet? Analyzing the data he sent, the sooner we find the weapon and use it, the sooner our people will be safe. Find that weapon to use against the humans so that the aliens will be safe. So we need to disrupt the government, throw it into disarray so they stop hunting us, at least until we find the weapon. Cut off the head. We will take out President Martinez. Throw the government in disarray and murder the president, take out the president. So this is their plan. Nothing like that has ever happened here. Why should I believe a word you say? My people are coming here in great numbers. The human population will have to be substantially reduced. It's regrettable, but some countries will have to be destroyed while others will be allowed to coexist with us. I'm offering you the chance to save your country. Be a collaborator, bro. No, no one is suggesting that you sit back. I want you to take an active role in the new order. What is this new order you speak of? <laughs> the non-terrestrials have been coming here for thousands of years. I am part of a tribe of sentinels who have been here just as long trying to protect humanity from them. Wait, you're, you're a hero? And they, this actor, the kid, you, you notice how they have... Whenever they put fake dirt on people's faces, you know, <laughs> where you can tell it's like not real dirt, like <laughs> didn't happen organically. This actor's name, something Ritter, I believe he's John Ritter, Three's Company Ritter's son. So they found a frozen cadaver, and that's where the weapon is hidden. Guess what the weapon is? The weapon to wipe out humanity. I saw in the room before I went down, I looked in his eye. He's behind this. I don't know how, but that man does not take the oath. And I took an oath when I was 16. Yeah, he doesn't want the vice president taking the oath because the vice president has now colluded with the aliens. First, he colluded with the Sentinel to kill the president. Now he's colluding with the aliens and he's poisoned him. Because <laughs> why not? There's a strict protocol here. The 25th Amendment clearly states that in the event that the president becomes incapacitated, the cabinet must appoint the VP to acting president. I've read the damn Constitution. Yeah, that's right. The 25th Amendment's a part of this, too. That came up recently. Right? A lot of things happening in this show in 2010 that came to be in 2020. The lungs are magnificent. I think we'll have very good results. So this soldier had the Spanish flu and he was encompassed in ice and the aliens figured it out. The aliens are immune to Spanish flu for some reason, even though they're aliens. 
And this guy's taking the, the dude's lungs. Of course, lungs has been very prevalent here lately. Declaration asking the president's cabinet to enact section four of the 25th amendment. Kazam, 25th amendment coming back around here. I can't tell how old the uniform is, but he was a soldier. He cracked his chest open. Why? Get to his lungs. Because a, a virus, you know, this is why the president's been poisoned in 25th Amendment. There's a virus going to be unleashed. It's a lung disease. I'm not a traitor. No. You're worse. You're just blindly following her. A sheep. Shut up. A coward. I said shut up! Don't call a sheep a sheep. You know better than that, alien dude. Mason. The flight's boarded. If we want to stop the courier, then we have to get on the plane. If we let that courier deliver the virus to Sophia, she'll use it against us. You saw what that virus does. Yes. I don't want to be stuck on a plane with WMD for 11 hours. Or even one hour. And, you know, you got to wear masks. Well, at least you will in the future. So the aliens want to test the virus out there, the lungs, in some... Uh, plastic they want to test the, the virus out at a mall because <laughs> that's how aliens roll she's able to see every minute of how the virus affects humans as well as having these test subjects to autopsy will be able to move forward is that all we are to you aliens is test subjects viruses mutate when they jump from species to species like bird flu becoming h1n1 when it crosses into humans if we jump the virus into the right species I've heard good things about bats. Don't underestimate the bat. I think I should look into the bat. The bat, you know, the bat. I think the bat is probably your go-to for virus jumping. What is that? In 1918, the Spanish flu pandemic killed 20% of the world's population. Yeah, but what about a virus that killed 1%, Miss Smarty Pants? There were localized strains and mutations. This is one of them, a strain... <laughs> So deadly, it turned entire cities into graveyards. No. I told you to use a bat. They're using this alien hybrid. This is a, a daughter of a human and a alien, or an EB, the technical term for you nerds out there. And so, but I said bat. They want to use an EB. I don't know. You know, she's mixed. And now you are a hybrid, a bridge between our people. Mm. Mm. You're going to help us spread it. Wait, aliens are using cotton swabs to spread a deadly virus? Who would think about it? It's inconceivable. Sophia, it's Carlos. Everyone's in position at the infection sites. So here is where they're trying to spread the virus. Here, He's a TSA agent, and he's spraying it at the airport, at the grocery store. They're going to spray it on the food. And at the Federal Reserve, where they're printing the money, they're going to Put it on the money. Now, shutting down a terminal at an international airport, that's another matter. Well, we need to do something one way or another. If Sophia succeeds in infecting passengers and they travel to other countries, there'll be no way to stop the spread of this virus. Well, what if you had everybody wear, like, a piece of an old T-shirt across their, their face? Would that, would that work? President Martinez and Peel are doing everything they can, but... Looks like it may be up to us to stop Sophia's operation at the airport. Us? Four people? How are we supposed to do that? We could call in a bomb threat, shut the airport down that way. That doesn't sound like a good idea at all. Is it true? Of course not. How do I know you're not lying to me? That you haven't been lying to me from the very beginning. Listen to me. Tomorrow, there will be a new world order with your guiding hand. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective a new world order can emerge. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. It is a big idea, a new world order. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. 
Jarvis, a man so deluded and hungry for power that he would sell his soul and the soul of this country. America, this president saving the soul of America from this vice president who's going to be a part of a new world order. See, it's all coming together in 20, I don't know what year this show's in. 2020 is when it's playing out, though. Our people were here before. We were here first. Bragger. I don't, I don't understand. This place was our home before it was yours. Because my people believe that if we stay here, something will happen to all of us. We call it the event. It's the event. The event it is. It's a rebirth. The next step for our people will change, evolve into something else, something greater. But your people won't survive it. So, um, you know, this is a common theme, this idea that the aliens were here first, which I'll describe at the end of the video. It's also in another movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still or something. I've been sent here to determine who or what you represent. I represent a group of civilizations. What were you before you were human? It would only frighten you. Why have you come to our planet? Your planet? Yes, this is our planet. No, it is not. It's not your planet. <laughs> and you weren't here first. So this is the last scene where the alien planet shows up in the our solar system, the Earth's solar system. The show was canceled, so there wasn't any further revelation about this. But this is where there is now two worlds. So I'm going to talk about all this, put it together in terms of various narratives and things that have floated around for years, things I know about at least as possible scenarios and and truthful things about true history, right? Because we don't get our true history. Our religion and our government and you know the powers that be, our educational system, is hell-bent at preventing us getting the true history. So there are a few things I want to say about this. Now, first of all, you have, for example, there'll be many people who are Christians that believe in giants. They believe in giants because the Nephilim are in the Bible, right? And there's mention of giants, David versus Goliath, and things like this. So they believe in giants because it's in the Bible, but they don't believe in aliens. They believe aliens are all demons or whatever it might be, but they don't believe that there are other planets that are inhabited. And that's not all Christians, but it's a very common belief. And so why would they put giants in the Bible and not aliens, right? And why would the government not want aliens as well? Why would the government not want you to know that there are other species of intelligent life, possibly far more developed than us, or even spiritual life, because there's life outside of the body. There are planets where there are etheric beings that are, you know, superior, more evolved, more, you know, closer to God and, and more divine. And so both the Bible and the government wouldn't want you to know these things, or not the Bible, but the, the hierarchy of the various religions, because if there are beings that are more evolved than people, well, the American government doesn't want you to know that, right? What makes people into the American government is we have the biggest kick-ass military and we're the greatest whatever country in the history of the world, right? And so the highest authority on the material world is America. We are the biggest, baddest, whatever, country. And if there were extraterrestrial beings that had superior technology and could wax our armies and these things, well, that would be something where the American government would lose control over the people because there's no supremacy there. And the same thing with religions if they acknowledge higher developed souls and other things that are outside the control of the religion itself, well, the religion doesn't have a 
you know, a copyright or a trademark on God. But the fact of the matter is, and I'll just show all these various pictures I have in this folder, there's all this evidence in ancient art and, you know, aboriginal art, cave art, and even, you know, oil paintings and things like this. There's all these accounts from sky people and indigenous, various indigenous tribes and things like this. And there's all these various things in, you know, ancient texts and things about a long history of space people that were on this planet. So there was something here. And so, you know, I'm always open to something, right? I, you know, like, I don't know if I would consider this stuff fact. One thing I would consider fact is that the pyramids, which are global, there's global pyramids that were built at a time where human beings were so primitive that there was no world travel. There was no way that the cultures around the world could get together and build pyramids about the same time period, all of them. And they're unique, but they're also very similar pyramids from around the world. So if you understand that the pyramids, and there's like, you know, I, I watched some documentary on the History Channel, something like Ancient Aliens or something, it's kind of a cheesy show. But they said things that I already knew a little bit about. And that was the pyramids are so, you know, built in such a way that we could not create them with our own technology with all of our extensive machinery, cranes and giant backhoes and things, the stones that were moved, you know, we couldn't move the stones, many of the big stones that were in the pyramids of Giza, the pyramid of Giza and some of these pyramids in South America and things like this. But these pyramids are all over the world and they're beyond our ability to build, not just in terms of moving the stones and things like this, but they're architecturally superior in terms of the quality and the, the precision is off the charts and things that you know our architects with all our computers couldn't design and build and have that kind of result. And that's why the Freemasons were called the great architects. In the heartfulness system, they've said there's a, you know, from one of the whispers in the brighter world, Babaji says, were interplanetary relay stations. They were ways for they were ways for spaceships to navigate to the Earth. And they're centrally located in such a way. Plus, many of them, I mean, I believe they all created some sort of a power source. And so there was, you know, they were used for something beyond what humans of that time could conceive of. And so with all this evidence that's there, I you know, firmly believe that there are other beings outside this planet, especially the vastness of the universe. And I also did some research into this thing where there's just you know, there's the third and the, the second and third chromosomes are fused together in the human being. There's a lot of messed up things genetically in human beings, a lot of various types of um, diseases, you know, congenital diseases, diseases that people are born with that you can't reproduce if you have the disease. And so there's no way to pass on that disease. And so it should be eradicated from the human genetic sequence. If you have you know, if you have a gene and you have some sort of, you know, weird genetic anomalies, which would be some sort of birth defect and all these things, and it's passed on genetically, but the babies, the people that get this disease, right, that inherit this disease can't reproduce, and why is it still in the human genome? It's not just one thing. There's so many things like allergies and all these things that seem strange because there seem to be sloppy work done like a genetically modified slave or something. And this was sort of confirmed in the heartfulness system that said, you know, that we came from a test tube, at least this version of human beings. And that there's some other, you know, higher developed beings here at some point on planet Earth, and then they made slaves or whatever, and they took off and left the slaves in charge, you know, the Freemasons or whoever it might be, who have knowledge of this and pass it on. You know, they have this secret knowledge they pass on, these various secret societies and, you know, the inner workings of what I call the controllers, they have access to this information, maybe have contact with various levels of these types of beings. You know, I'm just saying this as a believable and reasonable narrative. And so if that's the basis of our human experience and they're not sharing that with us, and you look at these, you know, TV narratives and these movies time and time again, 
they lie to you. You know, they show the government lying to you and say you can't handle it, right? That the government, the people who run the world, they can handle these things, but you can't. And to some extent, they're right. You know, I mean, human beings flip out like power outages or just the minor disappointments or winning the Super Bowl or something. The fans go and loot and go nuts in the streets and things like that. There's violent tendencies. And, uh, you know, I covered this some in my book, The Choice. You know, there's genetically modified people or, you know, strains of people on this on this planet that were made to be warriors, right? So you have that in the human genome now and things like that. So there, you know, this idea that there were, you know, beings that'll come back to this planet and say, hey, we're back, right? <laughs> what have you guys been doing since we were gone? And that we were given technologies that we're really not ready for. Human beings aren't ready for atomic bombs and things like this. And there was people that live longer. That's a big difference because only living for... I don't know, 70 years. And when you're a human being, that means that when you have kids and you're at your, you know, highest potential in terms of your career and the work in your life, right? You have that, you know, a marriage, kids, and your career all happening at the same time. And you have about 20 prime years where you're no longer a kid. You know, you're in your 20s, your 30s, then you hit your 40s and you're starting to go downhill physically even to some extent mentally, and you still have all these things to work out, and then there's no time to like reflect on God and you know create a spiritual life because, I mean, you just boom, 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 you're dead, right? <laughs> you're a kid, boom, you're an adult, you have kids, you have a job, you have all these things, you're juggling all these things, a relationship, all these things are happening in these you know key 20 to 30 year period, and then you're old and like whatever, right? And so when people used to live thousands of years, people are capable of living 10,000 years even or whatever it might be, there was a, you know, a slowing down of all these things. You could focus on you know, one thing or another for long periods of time and there wasn't this rat race. I mean, these are different yugas and people with different genetics and they were superior in terms of their ability to, you know, they could meditate for 5,000 years and things like this, right? They could focus on spirituality and become wiser. And, you know, they had a whole, you know, long period of time to accomplish what they needed to accomplish in the material world. It wasn't this rat race and you basically hit the ground running, right? Especially, you know, as modern times have evolved and people are busier and busier and, you know, every second of their day and now they have a, a cyber world. And so somebody who lives a thousand years would be so much superior to a person who live 70 years. And I'm saying this because when you watch movies and TV shows or read various types of books, people think, wow, you have a great imagination. But as far as I know, right, this is something I've learned from my spiritual practice, that humans aren't as imaginative as people think. Like I've always been a daydreamer. I have sort of a visionary personality. But to my understanding, most things that human beings imagine exist in one realm or another, some other place, or, you know, they're going to exist in the future or something like this. And so most of these works of fiction are based in something that has manifested in reality. They're based in real life. You take, for example, Gulliver's Travels, which was a fantastical type of a book. But if you understood the time period, the guy who wrote Gulliver's Travels was just slaying the corruption of the aristocracy and the politicians and the royals and all these people. Like they had these two groups. One was they ate the softball egg with the big end up, the big enders. And the other group was the group that ate the softball egg or hard boiled egg with the little end up. And they're called the little enders. And they went to war over this, right? I mean, just brutal, satirical stuff. So you look at this imaginative tale with giants and, you know, Lilliputians, these small, you know, these various types of things that were fantastical. You say that guy has quite an imagination, but it was really based in, I mean, the genius of that book would be about his ability to create a fantastical tale that was a scathing rebuke against the people that ruled the system at that time. And you see this time and time again, right? It's something that's very 
common that these shows are based in real life. And it's stuff that when you, you know, are some sort of awoken person, you can see the reality in these things, even though most people can't, because you've done a little bit more research and you can see that they're actually telling you things that are based in real life facts and events, even though they're a little bit modified. But the big problem with our society right now, in no other time in human history have the people in the lower part of the pyramid been so deceived by the leaders, which comes up time and time again in these shows. The leaders just don't ever level with you, tell you the truth. They use knowledge as a leverage, and they give you disinformation and false information about your true history, about the nature of your soul, the nature of you as a spiritual essence, your relationship with God, and then all these other things in terms of universal truths and the various levels of like whatever, ETs or whatever it might be. And they're there in these, you know, it's like part of you knows, and so you need something like, you know, some sort of science fiction movies or whatever it might be to satisfy the part of you that craves to know the real story because you don't get it, right? You're not getting the real story from the people who control the world. And there's so much disinformation and hostility, you know, like people in the truth community can't agree on anything, right? And so, you know, I mean, finding the truth in a sea full of lies, especially the divine truth, this idea of your true purpose and your soul's purpose on this planet and the way religions have just hacked up all of these various truths and they give you little piecemeal things here and there, but it's mostly stuff that ultimately leads to your control and them acting as a middleman between you and God and telling you that God is some far off being, right? Instead of being there inside of you and everywhere. And that little, you know, just that little bit of knowledge in terms of my own personal experience doing the heartfulness meditation, which helps people connect to God in themselves and everywhere else. Just that little bit of a tweak has changed my life in so many different ways and, you know, made this YouTube channel worth listening to for some people at least, you know. So you're just turning from there to there instead of thinking God is in some far off place and separate from you, knowing that God is inside you and you can connect to God and have a relationship with God. It's just a small thing. But right now in this effed up world, it's everything. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely reporting from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.